Nostalgia Street invites you on a retro ride that's more than just a trip down memory lane. Uncover life lessons and personal growth stories that stem from our collective past. So you can live a richer, more connected life today. Whether you're a 90s kid, an 80s teen, or simply young at heart, you'll find something to relate to in each episode. Now, here are your hosts, Vince and Jeff. All right, welcome back to another exciting, stimulating, and riveting episode of Nostalgia Street. Did you say simulating? Like we're in the Matrix or something? Yes, I did. This is all simulation, folks. Jeez, who are you? That's my uh, my business partner and co-host, Vince. And this is Jeff. I'm actually with two Jeffs today. Yeah. So I don't I know how that's going to work out. Well, speaking of Jeff, Jeff is our host today. We'll get into more of what he's all about in just a second. But this is where Vince usually asks the most random question, but entertaining question of the podcast. So today, we're going to lean into your background here, Jeff. Okay. Uh, you're a, you're a Boy Scout, so y'all have these things called jamborees, I understand. Mm-hmm. And do. jamborees have competitions. Mm-hmm. You maybe, I don't know. If there was a jamboree competition, and you had you know, troops led by Superman, Captain America, and Yogi Bear, <laughs> and all things, and you gave them you know, a set parameter, like you know, Superman can't just fly and use his super strength and all that kind of stuff. They're like, you know, they're, they got to stay within scouting rules and scouting etiquette. Which I don't know what that is. You can this like, is you, a really long question, question, bro. Oh, this is, Who yeah, wins the jamboree? Whose troop wins the jamboree? Okay, so it's a. <clears throat> I guess I would say uh, Captain America. Now that's that's probably more recent because I've become like a recent Marvel. Well, I'm a Infinity Stone Saga Marvel person. I don't know right. about this new yeah. stuff, but yeah, I would say Captain America because really? he just. We, you you made me think about it, right? Like the virtues of the program, the scout law. Like I feel like he embodies all those things. You know, probably the best of the three. That's such a crazy question. Well, I mean, like Superman, <laughs> like is always called the boy, the Boy Scout of the group. Yeah, but no, no, that's oh, Captain America. Yeah, Captain America. No, Captain scout. America is America's ass. That is America's ass. What? <laughs> oh, that is true. That too. Uh, no, they call him Boy Yogi Scout. Bear is just quintessential scout, scouting well, material yeah, template no, right I there. I know, but yeah, sorry, Jeez. doesn't hold a candle. I mean, <laughs> there goes our the rating for kids on YouTube. Yeah. Vince, thanks a lot. <laughs> Jeez, did I swear? I swear. No, he oh, did. I swear. We've done yeah, that you before. Can swear. Right, no yeah. f bombs, probably. But okay, okay. We're well, like a Disney movie. We get one <laughs> bomb per movie. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Well, today's uh, episode or podcast, we're we're having tea time today, shall we say? We're enjoying ourselves over a happy hour tea. So and, let's uh, uh let's this clink is sponsored our to you by voice. sponsor. Yes, this episode is sponsored by Forefront Studios. Um, Vince and I have now been in our new space for almost a month and uh, having a great time with it. So at Forefront Studios, we create video content that helps increase your success. And we're having a ball doing so. We work with uh, clients of all shapes and sizes, nonprofits as well. So if you need content, video content, or strategy in your marketing, visit the boys at Forefront Studios. All right, now it's time for our guest. So our guest today, as I alluded to, is another Jeff. our Jeffs? Our Jeffs. <laughs> our Jeffs today, you know, you know, the incorrigible Jeff Pickett, our, my co-host, but we also have Jeff Hayward, Hello. The Startup Sioux Falls Program Manager and Co-Founder at Dakota Adventure Supply. You got it. And these two Jeffs, if you guys haven't known already, they are best friends. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a whole album of just Jeff photos. Jeff stick together. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I remember we spell our names correctly. Well, I remember he taught you how to ride a one wheel. No, I had I I well he 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 got me excited about it again. Yeah. I learned how to ride the one wheel many years ago, and then I oh. and then I ate shit, and then and then sold it <laughs> and then sold it. So Jeff got me back on a one wheel. So he was whispering behind you, like it's, get on it, get exactly, on it, exactly, exactly. And my wife Kristen actually has been when I was telling her about this, she was cursing you out oh yeah behind your back she's all like right. it's not happening i have to talk to her about yep, that yep, yep. man those those fences all right well <laughs> so as you may or may not know jeffrey we we like to get on the show and talk about the memories and the stories that shape us mm-hmm. so we like to throw out some random questions not as random as vince's but sometimes random so what movie did you watch as a youngster that made you realize Hmm. Maybe I want a girlfriend. Ooh. This is a loaded one. It's a loaded one. I mean, it's just straight up. It's 
it's Back to the Future. I mean, that's like th- those that series. But <laughs> right. but I mean, the first movie's got Jennifer in it, his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Um, they obviously hit it off well. And that actress, do you remember the actress's name? I don't. Because they did change Shue, it, right? Yeah, Elizabeth Shue is the is the um, the fill in for two and three. Okay, I don't remember the name. I of the I think first she was one. the best. I always had a crush on Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, but I don't remember the first one at all. Both Jennifers. I'm an equal equal Jennifer. You could have worn your vest to uh, mimic Michael J. Fox. You know, we were supposed to have like self like tying dainties by now, according to Back to the Future and hoverboards. I Bun feel kind of left, left mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So, so what was it about Back to the Future that was? It just stays in your memory because you like that one a lot, right? I do that whole series. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I don't really know. I would guess that my parents. I mean, I rem- I have memories of watching it with my parents. So yeah. I was born in eighty four. The first movie came out in eighty five, and I was I actually was just talking to my parents about this. I was just yeah. trying to identify. When would I have first gone? We we think that my parents took me to three in the theaters, okay. which was in 90, I think. And so before that, I mean, when was VHS? That was a thing in the late 80s, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm Early. pretty sure. And I've asked my parents, like, I'm pretty sure the, he had, my dad had recorded, you know, on the v, on VHS off yeah. of HBO or something back yep, then. Yep. And I, those videos, mu- those videotapes must be worn out. So I've, I've just told him, I was like, if you find those, keep them. So you uh, should ask your parents, was that what you guys used to babysit me when you guys went out? They would just put it on <laughs> repeat, put you in the uh, crib, and they just duck out the back door. That's what my wife does now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so is there like a quote or a scene that just you just oh. that is your go to? That's a that's a good question. Uh, it is a quotable movie, but I, d- I can't think of any right now. I was so I was t- talking to my wife about as I recently watched the series again. My favorite scene of the entire series is the opening shot of the third movie, and this is where it is 1955. Yep. This is the situation where Doc Brown 1955 has just sent Marty back to the back to 1985 from the original movie. But from the second movie, Michael J. Fox or Marty has now been stuck back in 1955. Doc was in the flying hovercraft or uh, the DeLorean. He gets zipped back to 1885. And that scene where he comes running, I mean, so the the DeLorean goes, Marty's back to the future. Doc is from 1955, is running around, like celebrating in the streets. And around the corner comes the other version of Marty. And then Doc starts screaming. That's that's like that little scene right there, I think, is just a perfect. It's like everything. The music score is coming in. You get yeah. it. I just get a taste of everything. So it'd be that scene. I was in California and I was on the, I think it's the Universal Studios back lot. And that's where they filmed um, like the the clock tower. Oh, yeah. Whatever. I've never seen that's that. That's where they did that. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I would love to see that. Now, can you, here's another trivia question. What? actor played his father in the first movie oh it's uh crispin glover yeah you know, that's nice just in the first movie yeah yeah. and i was just talking to my wife about this as well is that i think he there was something I, I need to research this like he he was a little high on himself i believe he was a strange guy there's there's uh you go to youtube and you you i think you you type in something like david letterman's worst interview or scary he interview he was a he was a strange guy. And mm-hmm. The way he acted as a father is kind of how he acted in real life. His his huh. voice fluctuates up and down. He kind of erratic, and he was in a couple of movies, but mm-hmm. he didn't last too long. So, who was his father after that? They had a couple of they had just a couple of stand ins, and there's a whole okay. thing in in two. He's hanging upside down from a in the future, yeah. so that that you couldn't really tell. You couldn't get a good look at his face, uh, sure. right? His hair is kind of hanging down. And then uh, in three, there's just this like distant scene. Everybody comes out of the house except the dad is staying back in the the front door behind the screen. Okay. So they they just did some clever like tricks and angles yeah. to kind of hide it. Maybe it was just like you know a commentary on absentee fathers in that era. That's interesting. That is an interesting mm. interesting way to look at it. That era. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to make something out of nothing, you know. So if you liked. <laughs> If you like the uh, back in time, 
Were you a big Huey Lewis fan also? Oh, yes, I was. Absolutely. And that, they were in all the movies, right? Just the first one. Oh, really? Yeah. You you are a good I mean, fan well, they're I mean, maybe their music was probably featured in all three, but yeah. Huey is in the first movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. he was playing he's guitar? Battled, no, he's Battle of the Bands judge. He's the guy oh, the <laughs> He's the guy who right? cu- yeah, he cuts them off. Okay. He cuts off the the Pinheads, which is yeah. Marty's band and just says I'm I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. <laughs> so so what um, what other groups did you enjoy listening to besides mm. Huey Lewis? Both of my parents were big into oldies music, and I grew up in Pierre, South Dakota. And when you say oldies, what, yeah, what, what, like, some Pierre, that's there. a good like fifties, sixties, okay. like that kind of music, yeah. right? Like uh, the doo wop and yeah. you know, that I kind of stuff. I think the kids nowadays call that the ancient music. Ancient music, that's because fair. their oldies is like two thousands. Yikes! <laughs> yikes! Big yikes! Um, yeah, I grew up listening to that, and I I have good memories of. Um, my parents and I like driving places. We lived out of town a ways, so we'd always have a little bit of a commute. And uh, just had these memories of them playing that radio station uh, and and quizzing me on who was the artist yes. and what was the song name. And it, I I'm bad at that now. I you know I still love that music. I'm I don't I don't retain a lot of that, but there's good memories related to so that. So who are their favorites that they like to listen to oh, that's, or brainwash you with? That's some good questions. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so mom was a huge Elvis fan. She's okay. got a great story. Of course she was. She's got a great story of seeing Elvis in one of his last shows in Rapid oh, City. Wow. All right. Right before came, he died. He came to Rapid City? Oh, yeah. It was the they very came. first show at the the Civic Center in, in Rapid City. Huh. It was the oh. opening show. Yeah. She's got some good stories of her and her sister, uh, like losing their minds at that show. <laughs> but yeah, so I think there was that. Um, I'm trying to think like temptations. My parents really got me, I think it was my mom really got me onto uh, Gladys Knight and the and the Pips. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And Night Train to Georgia. That is a favorite yeah. Uh, yeah. song of mine. It was played at my wedding. Uh, oh, there you so, go. So, yep. Yep. So, what other uh, songs kind of live rent free in your brain or melody? Mm. Mm, melody. Hmm. I mean the 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 other bands I grew up listening to was um, I I just I got these you know CDs were just starting to come out and my dad was into music like he'd collect records and and not great records right my dad's the one joke he said is because I had a friend who had you know his dad had all the original Beatles albums right like uh, on vinyl yeah and I was like dad where are your Beatles albums and he's like nah I didn't have any Beatles albums I've got a, a Dave Clark Five album here and I said <laughs> Who? what Who's Dave he? Clark Five yeah yeah exactly but my dad's his his famous line is the jury's still out on that one so someday someday Dick Clark's we'll see. brother <laughs> yeah right yeah. Well, some I was people hope say he's Dick uh, Clark exactly yeah exactly sheesh <laughs> I was gonna hope that you could hum for us a melody or something that's living oh. rent free in your head I don't know that I could do that. But no do 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 do's. I don't think so. Really, I, I'm blanking. You're you're. I'm well, getting stage you fright. Give him in give this him moment. A one yeah. What would what would be yeah an example of one? What's the song that lives rent free in your head? I couldn't tell you the name of it, but I could tell you. I could hum the melody. Hmm. It's like do 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 do. do. Oh, it's it's like sounds a, like the Hobbits. Yes. <laughs> It's actually yeah, that's right. That's a, it is. What it is. Yeah, it's a Shire song. Crap, that's what, Name that, that home. That melody is stuck Ooh. in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was like, what is that thing that's stuck in my? Now How I know. Has that been stuck in your head since the movies came out? <laughs> and I was halfway joking when I said that, but it sounded like it. No, but so. seriously, that's it's like a uh, melody that lives rent free in your head. That's one that does uh, pop in there, but I don't have one specific one. It's just little little things that'll pop into my brain. I'll just hear something, and a couple of days later, it kicks out of the subconscious. Well, like we always joke about being in the corner. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. REM, that song, that's me in the I corner. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know why, but it applies to so many things. Like, well, when we were moving into the space, like, where <laughs> should we put it? And I'm like, oh, that's me in the corner. Yeah. It just, I don't know, well, just we're literally in a corner right out. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> The podcast is in the corner. That's true. <laughs> we had Back to the Future. Were there other movies with multiple sequels that Ooh. that got your attention? Oh, now I'm just trying to think other movies with sequels, like Never Ending Story. Though I couldn't, uh, I couldn't probably describe the plot of the second movie. I just there's remember a movie. The, oh oh yeah, gosh. 
Oh yeah, there's but, a second movie. Oh, oh, oh. don't get me started. Is on Is there movie. a second movie? Yes, there's a second. movie. There really wasn't a first movie. I don't remember so much bad. about it. There's a though, never yeah. ending story. Yeah, right. It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who sang that song? Wah, wah. Do you remember? That was, was the same song, Never Ending Story, and I'm pretty sure it was. Mm -hmm. David Bowie. No, no. Oh, no, I don't really know who sang it though. I, I think it was. And I should again. We keep talking about having a computer here. Uh, we I think his name was Jamiroquai. Huh? He had yeah. that was the musician. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure you're talking about the theme. Yeah, the theme story, song, which was featured in Stranger Things season three. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. No, I am a big movie buff. Movie buff. Big movie buff. Mm -hmm. I, I always appreciate the amount of work that goes into movies. Hmm. However, I saw the never ending story, and I can't say on camera what I wanted to do to myself or my head. Everybody but, grab a drink. Um, yeah. It was, to me, <laughs> it, it was, the, it was the most painful movie because you're riding a, 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 a half-ass uh, dragon with fuzzy hair. Yeah, it's like a dog dragon thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I, I just couldn't do it. It's though. lovable. Couldn't go there. Billy Crystal. Great you, cameo oh, in I that movie. Billy Crystal is in that. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You didn't want a Falcor? Oh, uh <laughs> Watch your language. I don't mean that. <laughs> that, That's his name. <laughs> the dog dragon thing. Uh, Falcor? His name is Falcor. I wouldn't uh, know. I wouldn't I, even remember that. I probably actually. fell asleep okay. at that point in time. Well, what about um, that was a time period of weird uh, movies. Star Wars? That was popular, oh, yeah. right? Yep, that's fair. That's fair. Those are span the ages. Yeah, and I was big into Star Wars. I got into uh, actually um, Star Trek. Uh, probably yep. early on, I was big Star Trek. Actually, the first, I, I just found this out. The first movie I went to was Star Trek Four. Oh, the uh, voyage, voyage home, home. The yeah. whales. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's that wasn't right. my fave, but it was different. Yeah, because it was my, that's one of the first ones where they came back. So you have this theme now, this whole mm -hmm. time travel. Oh yeah, that's kind yeah, of the good, thing because they travel in time. So real question now: Are you a time traveler? <laughs> I mean, I can't answer can't that question. Tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's behind us in the corner. <laughs> in the corner again. So did you Always see Wrath of that. that was third. That was Two. second. Yeah. Oh, okay. I I mean I have seen it. Yeah. It was it was probably years later though. Where, uh, well, there's like a I mean, that probably wasn't that much later because that is a I mean, that was like a long term nightmare from that movie, the like earwig thing that they yeah, put in that's the helmet. What I was say. You put that in check off. Terrifying. Yeah, that was. I mean But who knew that Ricardo Montalban, that's the con. He used to be on Fantasy Island back oh. when I was a kid. Hmm. Who that he was ripped in that movie. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And he had the of course he had the fake wig hair to make it look like he So right. which crew member did you identify with the most? Ooh. Ooh, uh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I always liked uh McCoy. I mean, I, 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 I see you as McCoy. And I never really, he's just kind of a smart ass sometimes, right? Yep. That's yep. what always stuck the bill. For, Yeah, exactly. So I liked what he added. I liked about, all the characters, but you? I liked what he added. Um, check off, because it's a little hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> I knew y'all going to say Sulu. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just literally picked somebody else. <laughs> I did like Sulu. <clears throat> I just never understood why he just, there's always those shots of him shirtless with the saber, and I'm like, that's so weird. <laughs> Sulu? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Well, he's probably the only one that was in shape that could take his shirt off. Yeah, right. Exactly. Probably. We'll be right back. All right, so we've talked about some movies and we've talked about some music. So what were uh, what were some of the games that you enjoyed, either yourself or your family? Yeah, what what kind of game specifically? What kind yeah, like of games arcade were... or board games, either oh, yeah. one. We played, I mean, some board games when I was younger, like Monopoly and that kind of stuff. But it wasn't we weren't huge That's into that stuff. Video games. I was a uh, like early Nintendo adopter. The Wizard, actually, another great '80s movie. Um, Wizard. The Wizard with uh, is that the Super Mario Bros. one where they play really well and they go to the tournaments. Exactly. Yes, and the whistle uh, warps and yeah, yeah. Gosh, it's excellent. I'm trying to blank on that one. Great movie with uh, Fred that? Savage as okay. a young young Fred right, Savage. Right. Speaking of Nightmare Fuel, how about the the first live action Super Mario Bros. movie? Yeah, you know what? Honestly. <laughs> I think there's some redeeming qualities to that movie. Shh. Okay. It's not Sorry. great. I'm not going to own it or anything, <laughs> but some good actors were in that movie. 
Yeah, people people signed their names up to be on that movie, and they were decent people. Dennis Hopper. I don't actually remember the guy's name who was Mario, but he was a great I, actor. I just remember the Goombas and whatever, the, the creatures. Yeah, that was rough. We're nightmare fuel. Oh, that was uh, John yeah. Leguizamo? Yeah. Yep. That was the Mario? Was the Lee, no, Luigi. he was Luigi, yeah. Okay. I don't remember who It Mario was the guy was, from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was, uh, was uh, Mario. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, detective? Yeah. Dude, yeah, and he's from Australia. I don't know. Why I, I was, know that. One but. thing I was gonna say quick is you guys mentioned like getting a laptop out here. Yeah. I actually appreciate it because for the theme of this show, yeah, it's like back in the day, you just had to figure it out. There wasn't oh, the internet, yeah. right? And yeah. you, it was a little bit of like convincing of like who's, you know, well, do I know what I'm talking about or do I not know what I'm talking <laughs> about? I saw a TikTok just yesterday about that. About um, some girl, a young girl, made a statement and then. You know, somebody in her 50s just threw it out there about, oh, my God, how do we survive? Like, you know, we had this this thing. If we didn't know where to go, we had this thing, and, and we had to unfold it in these unwieldy ways. And then we never could fold it back together again when we were done. We'd have to wad it up and throw it in the glove box, and we called it we called it a map. <laughs> and she just went through all these pieces. But, yeah, it, it, it really does make you wonder how on earth we did what we did because we were in— Detroit or north of it coming back and without GPS right in front of you on your phone we'd be pulling over all the time yeah. asking or even where a we go. stack of map quest map quest yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we did that a lot page yep. I I appreciate that my dad I mean I remember sitting down with him with a highway map and he was showing me right like how to how to determine how to count the miles where to find that yep. you know so you can track it I was always one of those people who like rode my gas tank down pretty low <laughs> so I was always looking at that Kramer. trying to figure out yeah <laughs> like how far am I to Plankington here it's it's a it was a different time I yeah. I got almost lost in Minneapolis when I was young just cuz but you were in scouts, so you should have like a secondhand knowledge, like built-in compass. I built suppose. Compass. I suppose I could have like, used tell us the, the stars. wind speed and yeah. everything. <laughs> I could wind speed, navigated. stars, moonrise. <laughs> if the, if the oh, cold man. front is coming. <laughs> so what? I, I, I like. A, there's a question that popped in my head that we haven't really entertained with anybody. What were some of those things that your dad taught you? Those little memories, mm. man to man. Mm. Anything come to mind? Yeah, that's a good question. Things my dad taught me. I mean, yeah, there was little like practical things like that. He taught me how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> yep. Um, that, and you still? That took two times. I can. It's been a little while since I've done it. But what is a stick shift anymore? They don't really make them anymore. Do no, they? that's pretty no, this rare. This is a sports they... car. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so here, this it's weird that my my brain just works like this. Just last weekend, I'm like, you know, I haven't had pancakes for a long time. So I whipped them up and I threw them on the grill. And my dad taught me the right time to flip the pancake. Mm. Do you know the... I mean, it's when the bubbles start to burst, yeah. right? And I, I've never had that conversation with anybody until mm. right this minute. But I thought, hmm, I wonder where my dad got that piece of advice. Because it always works. Mm -hmm. Once the bubbles are popped, flip it over. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, let's see. We didn't believe in syrup in my household. What, um, does, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> first off, like my dad had no idea how to make pancakes, so my mom made them. And my mom's solution to not having syrup was she just loaded them full of sugar. Ah, uh, butter and then sugar? No, oh. just the batter just straight up had sugar oh, in it. Oh, I see. And like, I didn't believe in I know, yeah, it was like, it would, I don't, she didn't make a pancake like you guys put on a griddle. Like she literally just took like a little frying pan, filled it with the batter, and then cooked it on one side and went to put a cover on it. So like, Again, we didn't know what pancakes were until sure. in America sure. we call that a crepe. Not even a crepe. It was like a, it was like thick. It was like a, I guess you call them Johnny cakes. Technically, I don't know. Oh, yeah, oh, interesting. yeah. Interesting. Well, crepe. What I don't know. I know it's thinner than a pancake, but it's like a, and it's usually sweeter too, though, isn't it? Uh, you put you still put stuff in it. It's just like my parents' concept of like a like they didn't know what pancakes were, so they tried to make it similar to what they knew. Mm -hmm. And because I remember Tony and I were like, we wanted pancakes. We were like everyone in our school eats pancakes yeah, for breakfast yeah, yeah. we have rice for breakfast like <laughs> let's try pancakes out mom <laughs> give us something sweet so there's no asian equivalent to pancakes not really just a rice what would break yeah what would breakfast be rice and soup or rice or um fried eggs a little soy sauce and bread something like that healthy yeah. breakfast mostly 
Yeah, nothing super sweet. Sounds like hmm. no no pop tarts. Yeah, the whole concept of sweet breakfast is weird to me. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. We we would go two different ways on pancakes, uh, syrup, butter and syrup, or butter, sugar, like poured all over it, and then rolled. Ooh, like mm. toothpicks, and then you kind of slice them in these little like little, a cake like, roll. Yeah, like these little yeah. uh, like little pancake little Debbie breakfast pig wheels. Have you ever Pen mixed uh, mixed peanut butter with syrup? And oh then, yes, yep. Yeah. That's a yeah. That's that's a another thing. My dad peanut butter first, and then syrup over the top. That's usually my. Yeah, I haven't had that in a while. Thank you for. Well, there we me. go. That's yeah. what the show's all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Remembering those things that we used to eat. Another thing my dad uh, taught me, oddly enough, is uh, you take a a sausage patty and you put it in like a souffle cup about that big. You put it in the in a cup. Stick it in the microwave for like a minute, two minutes. And then you take an egg and you bust it open and you can leave the egg as is or scramble it and put that right on top of the sausage and cook that in the microwave for another minute or two. Meanwhile, you can either do this with toast or just regular bread. And uh, I usually did uh, mayonnaise on that. And basically it was it was like an egg McMuffin. Hmm. And you want to squirt a little... Uh, oil or butter in the bottom of the souffle because otherwise the egg will stick to the pan oh, sure. or the, the souffle cup. But yeah, that was a little breakfast thing my dad taught me that didn't take a lot of time. And mm. it's a pretty fast way to eat breakfast. What did your guys' dads teach you to cook over a fire, an open fire? Because you're like a scouter, camper, you camp too. I mean, I figured you guys just do that kind of stuff. I mean, the only... Really, like the main thing that he would have dad taught me would have been like uh, hobo meals, right? So like stew meat, potatoes, carrots, that kind of stuff, and then just put it into a foil pack and thrown into the fire. And you just hmm. let it cook in there, right, right in the coals, and you fish wow. those things out of there and break them open. And what about a what about a barbecue grill? Did he? Oh no, that? dad! My dad's like, sorry, dad. My dad is. Like afraid of propane <laughs> grills, like just won't start them. Like, just like, nah, no thanks. He's the opposite of a maniac. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's just not a not a grill guy. So never was. Those are my memories. My my dad would uh, take as much lighter fluid as you could humanly use, and then toss the fire on and wait for the uh, eyebrows to get singed. <laughs> and then, but yeah, he taught he taught me you know how to how to start that grill and then. You know, we'd be outside on the deck making hamburgers and hot dogs. And I remember one time he was outside on the deck. My mom didn't realize that he was just going out there to take the food off the grill. She shut the slide door. He turned around and walked right into the door and the hamburger and hot dogs went flying. So I don't know if he told us that story after we ate or before I'm not sure if that food tasted differently that day or not, since it went on the ground. I'm not really sure. I'm sure it was. So fine. you are a Boy Scout aficionado, as, I, as we've heard. Are you an Eagle Scout? I am an Eagle Scout. Oh. So how did you get started in the uh, Boy Scout <coughs> world? Can you give, can you give us a, the motto? This is a good story. What's the motto? Yeah. Do a good turn daily. No, wait. That's the slogan. The motto is be prepared. Be prepared. Um, were you a Scout? Are you a Scout? I was. Are you an Eagle? No, not that cool. Um uh, Clip my wings. Couldn't hang, huh? All <laughs> right. But you, were you a scout? I was not. All nope. right. All right. I guess the first funny story about that is that when I, right when I was like of age to join scouting, they had, they had started the Tiger Cubs, which is like the youngest, I think, kindergarten age probably. Yep. And we lived out of town, so we would drive in. And I had a knack as a kid. As soon as we got in the car and we start moving, I would zonk out. I would just, I would fall asleep very quickly in yeah. cars. And we got to the church or wherever they were meeting, and I just was cranky coming out of that nap and was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing it, not leaving the car, I'm not going in. <laughs> and I didn't. And so I didn't join scouting that first year. So it wasn't until the next year that I, uh, that I joined back. So yeah. They fixed your nap routine. What's that? So your parents fixed that nap routine? They did. I, actually, that, that's like the, the joke there is my dad was just like, I'm not buying that crap this, this year. <laughs> like you're going in, I don't care. What was your fundraiser that you had to do? So we would do like our troop. Yeah. yeah. We would, 
pretty regularly do a pancake feed where we'd raise some money. We also did a garage pancakes. sale. The theme today. The ours yeah, was pancakes. <laughs> popcorn sales. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that's that was the, our main thing. Yeah, that's the standard. That was your that was your guys's yeah. primary. Yeah. Popcorn. Overpriced popcorn. Man, is it. It's like great. Commemorative tins. Yes. Commemorative tins. Do you remember it what goes they to what a were good they cause. commemorating? <laughs> Americana, the boy scouting way of life, yeah. being Nature, the fifty seventh year of Trail Z popcorn. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fifty seven. Here's Jebediah the third. <laughs> yeah. So what was uh, what was something that you learned, whether it's a Boy Scout or Eagle Scout, that you're like, man, I, I am so happy that I learned how to do that. I would generally go back to like what just pops into my mind. I was a pretty young senior patrol leader. Okay. Like, I think I was thirteen or fourteen, and there's. You know, there were older kids in the troop and they did not want to listen to me, right, when we were uh -oh. at a at a uh -oh. camp. And so there was just some of the stuff where you've got to figure it out, right? Yeah. And it and it and it kind of turned into the thing where it's like you you could reason with yourself that, well, I could go to the scoutmaster and whine about this and have them step in, but yeah. that's not gonna solve the thing. So I think it was just like getting that was like my first taste of getting put in uncomfortable positions, so, I guess yeah. I'd say. Was that back when we used to give out badges for submission holds? <laughs> what <laughs> i mean you obviously you're alluding to is you got these older kids to listen to you somehow but you didn't go to the scoutmaster oh, so no. i must assume you got to get some mission hold badge or no, something no 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 just just like direct <laughs> shame just like you know I, I honestly think that's what it came down to <laughs> direct shame was like you you know better the kid the guy's name was isaac i won't forget this but the guy's name was isaac and he was being a pain in the ass and the reality was he knew better and he was setting a bad example. So that's what I said. And then uh, I walked away I was, we're shame. literally talking about your tent is 10 feet. Like just put it in the line with the rest of the tents. Yeah. It was a small thing. Like this is the thing that we were spending time worried about, but so. Jeff earned the psychology badge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. Shame. What was your least favorite badge to attain? The least favorite badge. I mean, it was like, uh, I, I want to say like one of those easy, early, easy ones, like leather working or something like that. Like I wanted to get into, you know, you, you join and I think you, you want to earn your rank as quickly as possible. And so there's, there's the Eagle required merit badges, which are a little bit more intense. And so I think I remember at that point thinking, man, I wish I would have, I wish I would have done some more of those earlier. So what was your favorite badge? Um, drinking tea, you know, that'd be a can't get anyone in trouble for that one <laughs> um archery actually you didn't didn't like that i no. I, he said my favorite so my oh, favorite was yeah. archery oh hawkeye. that's cool no the not now we're near close hawk i almost hit my mom with an arrow once oh <laughs> at a kayla at like uh was oh it like God. it was like it was cub scout camp or whatever it was <laughs> what we was never it? went camping again all right like <laughs> that's fair that's how fair. did you almost hit your mom i wasn't looking with an arrow well she was right next to me. I had the bow. I was turning around like this way. And then I let it go and it, it like whizzed by her. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I don't know, 12? <laughs> and that's why you didn't get syrup on your pancakes because she almost. <laughs> did you get her. the merit badge though? That's the that's the important question. After I did. That, did you I get did. it? I did. Okay. Because it was just like the basic like requirements. Okay. Because you threaten your, your leader. If you don't give me this badge, I'm going to yeah, shoot, exactly. you. shoot you. <laughs> yeah. You saw me almost shoot my mom. Yeah. I mean, we're this not related. Cut this is cutthroat. <laughs> yeah. Cutthroat Holy Cup crap. Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did talk about the submission hold too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I don't know why we're uh, yeah, rough, so aggressive. Rough Boy you Scout know, crew. It was a troop in a church. <laughs> what weren't they most? What happened, happened outside of a church just didn't count. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> that kind of reminds me. I so I I like shotgun shooting merit badge. I enjoyed shooting trap, and oh. I like shooting trap. I haven't done it. hadn't done it for many years, but um, I liked that. My after I had that merit badge, and I did like a pretty young hunter safety course because I don't know what the age age was, but anyway, I was a twelve or something. Yeah. But my dad took me out hunting, pheasant hunting, and this is the first and only time. We're walking in a field. One of his old friends near Kimball. We're walking through a field. I'm in the middle, and my dad had kind of gotten ahead of me a little bit, and all of a sudden a bird flies up, and I before I mean. I mean, very quickly, I fired two blasts straight, straight over the top of my dad's head. Sorry, dad. <laughs> As he's yelling, it's a hen, it's a hen. 
So that was the last time my dad took me hunting. You almost pulled a Dick Cheney. I yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Cheney. Oh man. So were there any uh, signature dance moves or hairstyles oh. or trends. adjustments to your wardrobe? Oh man, trends that you uh, you love to get into or you were known for? No, I'm not a good dancer, and I hated that at when I grew up. Um, sixth grade. I, I was always a pretty like conservatively dressed kid, yeah. right? Um, but in sixth grade, I, for some reason, took to slicking my, like combing and slicking my hair straight back with gel, right. yeah. like straight yeah. back. So when you get those, when you look at like all my student photos, like over the years, you yeah. know, there's this glaring year where, <laughs> for Gordon, some reason, Gordon Gecko Wall Street yeah, style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really. Was, was there an influence that. there? Like, yeah, what was the inspiration? No, yeah. I really don't. Well, happy you don't, days. Yeah, happy days. Do you bonds? remember? Do you remember a couple of years ago there was a there was like a trend where people were showing like the then and now. Yes, you know, remember yes. that? And so I did a I did a then and now, or it was that photo of me, and then it was a photo of Jean Claude Van Damme and one of those eighties <laughs> movies where his hair was yeah, slicked back in a ponytail. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was actually. Um, oh, what was it? Double Trouble? No. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. that the name of that movie? I'm pretty sure it was the huh. one called that. Twins? Yeah. 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 That movie. So you're going to have to send that, us that picture. I, yeah. I will. I'll dig yeah. it. We'll I'll throw it in. I think the, it's on uh, my Instagram. I could, yeah, I'll send it out. <laughs> no, that's a uh, good reminder. So for our podcast, it's not just a podcast, but we we uh, kick out a video version. So for anybody that's listening out there on the audio part, check out YouTube so you can see what we all look like. And yeah, if you if you can find that picture, you'll throw it up on screen. Heck yeah! All right, all right. What it. was your uh, favorite hairstyle, sir? Oh, um, we went through this phase where. You did the parted bangs, mm. like you. Uh, the rest of the hair is all cut short, and then you have the the cut the bangs that like go like this, almost like the I don't know, like McDonald's arches. Like you had a middle part, or you had a, all of that hair was. So you would have like a middle part, yeah, and yeah. then you would have bangs. But sometimes people took it to an extreme where they would shave the back and the sides, and they would just have hair up top, and they'd have bangs. Like if uh -huh. I took my hair, made bangs like this, and then there was this weird thing where like, like I think some folks like literally dyed just the bangs. Blonde and everything I else. I need pictures. You got pictures of this? I didn't do that because that was. Oh, you didn't do it. That was degenerate oh, behavior. Let's. What, what? What? What did you do? What I? Oh, I went through a red vest phase where, like, for literally from like fourth grade to like sixth grade, I wore a red vest in every single picture. I went through a. Was that uh, Back to the Future time? Well, his yeah. was. Yeah. It was like a khaki, or was it red? It was red. Okay. I didn't think it was Back to the Future. I didn't watch that movie until I was like twenty. Oh, what? I know, right? <laughs> Very, what? very, very deprived childhood. What? Yes. Don't believe in syrup and don't believe in Michael J. <laughs> I don't, Fox. It's not that I don't believe in what syrup. It just didn't heck? exist in my household. I don't believe in it. <laughs> syrup is a real thing. Did he say that the first time? Yeah. yeah. My mom didn't believe in syrup. Yeah. Yeah. Sure I didn't that. say I didn't believe in syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Did just you go get mom. your own? Did you have your own bottle of syrup? Did you guys go like get? No, get, um, we weren't allowed to pick things out at the grocery store. Uh, it's too much power for uh, a child. Jeez. Uh, Hide like the yeah, hide a bottle of syrup under the floorboards. Yeah. So you uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, your your startup and and how the the Boy Scout influence entered that picture and yeah, like is is the outdoors that's been something that you've just kind of held on to as you've gotten older. You know that's so that's interesting and that's why you guys' podcast this is all kind of feels tied together to what we're doing with our startup Dakota Venture. I. I had all those experiences when I was younger um, and good, bad and otherwise. Right. I mean, it was it was at least one camp out every month and we'd go to camp, uh, summer camp in the summer for a week. And there'd be other, you know, jamboree I went to for two weeks. Um, so there was all that stuff. And I I had a lot of these great experiences. And then I went to college and discovered girls and just quit doing all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I. I've got very good memories of those experiences. And so <clears throat> that was pretty, re pretty recently my co-founder and I Paxton, we were both scouts. We met through that. Um, we've, and we've stayed in touch over the years. We got together, we were shock and shooting, we we're shooting trap, which we hadn't done in many years. And I whooped his ass. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm, Dad, good, I'm, good at, I'm great at, at, uh, at trap shooting. I'm, hey Dad, go pick that hurt. up down there. <laughs> Kaboom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but we were down there we just had a good time and we got talking about you know my day job is working in startup sioux falls yeah helping entrepreneurs and i've had some small businesses in the past so it really it was a little bit of like just catching the bug um 
And, and so a lot of that is just, it was, you know, related to, well, we can, you know, we can make this type of gear, but our brand is about more than that. And it's about camaraderie. It's about having shared experiences, whether that's climbing a mountain or if it's just going to tailgate at a football game. There, there's something I think a lot, a lot of people are experiencing right now, which is um, a little bit of screen overload. Mm, true, you know. And I think there's just I, I have found myself more and more thinking back to the '90s, as uh, which I hated the '90s at the time. Yeah. But I look back now, and I'm thinking, man, there was a nice little period of time there where, you know, things were just a little bit slower. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of the. That's that's the thing. It's we found opportunities. Uh, uh, I think it's it's a it's a thing where I've tried to challenge myself to get back outdoors. We went on a backpacking trip this summer, which was nice. First time I've done that in twenty years, probably. Yeah. So for our viewers who aren't really familiar with Dakota Adventure Supply, could you just give us a little bit about like just yeah. the mission and kind of some of the offerings you guys have? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> we. Dakota Adventure Supply. So we're uh, outdoor goods manufactured right here in South Dakota. That's our kind of our big value yeah. I think we bring. So not just made in America, but actually tapping into expert tradesmen and women who um, are primary partners, Aerostar Industries. It's mm-hmm. was a subsidiary of Raven. But these guys, they're contract sewers. They make, uh, you know, parachutes and all that kind of uh, these giant Weather yeah. balloons, Macy's right? Macy's Day balloons. Yeah, too. the Macy's Day yeah. balloons. Yeah, parade. Um, but they have a history of making outdoor gear. They used to used to make gear for LL Bean and Cabela's and Patagonia hmm. back in the Whoa. yeah eighties nineties. Um, and right around then is when uh, trade deals changed and a lot of these companies shipped uh, a lot of their production overseas. And so um, it's neat to kind of see tours of their factories and their offices because they've got some of this old gear that yeah. they had made clothing and apparel and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that's uh we're we're working with them to to make our gear and we've we have one launch product that we started with called the Adventure Tote and that really came down to a minimum viable product. Um so my co-founder is an engineer. He's he's an avid outdoorsman. He's been the the FOMO guy for me for many years. Um but there's a little bit of there's a huge benefit to having an engineer as a co-founder um, yeah. who's got a sewing machine because he can literally fabricate stuff. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the first bags we sold were handmade. He handmade them to order, and we had to cut off orders because we had an influx of them right away. Um, but yeah, he he came up with you know this product that we're finding really does serve a need. We make durable and versatile goods. Um, yeah. They're not going to have all the bells and whistles. They're not. They're not made to be super technical equipment, mm-hmm. but it's stuff that's going to handle both daily activities as well as uh, get you to you know whatever your next adventure the Patagonia is. Patagonia so. of bags. Well, uh, lifetime guarantee. We do have a lifetime guarantee. There, you go. there we go. Patagonia. Yeah. And as an avid indoorsman, mm-hmm. I would vouch <laughs> for these bags too. Yeah, right. I don't even wander out to the woods anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like you ever did. I said I only went camping once. Yeah. Is that when you shot your mom? Or... Almost. <laughs> no parents were harmed during the recanting of these stories. <laughs> well, so our last episode we had, uh, do you know uh, Nichelle Lund from uh, Holiday Inn? Uh, yeah. Chamber. Downtown. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah she's yeah, in yeah. Chamber. Yep. Um, she was talking about, we asked her about what led her into her um choice of a field or career and then what why she enjoys kind of more or less kind of being an ambassador for different organizations and the, like the word we kind of distilled it down to and and she kind of brought this out herself was just that we're experience mm. making sure that people have a good experience mm. and i think you know i would agree I, I like what you said about there is a little bit of a screen overload and experience isn't a word that we talk about quite often as we might because we're not outdoors as much and um if you've got to spend a little bit extra on something, but it provides you an experience, then it's probably worth it. We'd spend a lot mm-hmm. of money on technology. I know I do. But if we take that money and and create an experience, so rather than hoarding, uh, having something that you may or may not keep for a while, but you have that experience, like going camping or something like that, mm-hmm. if you do it right, those memories stick with you for you know quite a while. Absolutely. I mean, what are you when you look back at the end? You know, the end of our lives. Like the things that I think you're going to remember 
are those experiences you had with your kids and your family yeah. and your yeah. friends, right? Yeah. You're not going to remember the one wheel that you fell off and biffed, <laughs> right? And then sold a year later. So, no, I think that's exactly right. I the In getting outdoors, I think there's an, an even more important piece of that, which is when you think there's a book called The Comfort Crisis, which I'd highly recommend. But when you think about our, our lives now, the average human, right, in the United States, I mean, this obviously varies around the world, but we spend something like... 97% of our time, our lives, indoors, breathing, recycled air. Whether we are working in an office, whether we are sleeping in our home, right? So we spend all this time indoors. Yeah. Um, and there really is science that backs up when you are out, when you're unplugged, and when you are in the middle of nowhere with no distractions and no any of that stuff, it can really help reduce stress, mm -hmm. rewire your brain a little bit to not, you know, to yeah, be less stressed as well as just be able to handle challenges a little bit better. So highly recommend, you know, that it's, I, I don't know how, I don't know how many percent I can uh, try and squeeze into being outdoors in my lifetime, but I, I want to try. Yeah. So. Or to help other people yeah. do that as well. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what's a lesson that you learned uh, as an entrepreneur, as a startup that you would share with anybody listening that wants to create their own company? Mm -hmm. Just be willing to learn. Ask questions. I mean, find as, as many mentors as you possibly can, right? Mm -hmm. And I, and and that can be, I, I would get comfortable with hearing no for an answer. And I, and just, just meaning ask people if they'd be willing to have a coffee, ask people out for lunch, try to make a relationship with somebody and ask questions and then try to listen to some of it. I mean, you don't need to take every piece of advice from every person because everybody's got it, right? Mm -hmm. But there are people who've had experiences and have learned things or have, have at least had an experience that you could learn something from, yeah. whether it's how you apply it or not. But I just think that's the biggest thing is, is I know that I've still got a lot to learn and I'll never be done learning things. Mm -hmm. So you just got to be open to it because if, if you're not, you're going to be less successful because you're not just taking free advice and information to consider. And you're also going to start running out of those relationships because people, you know, when you ask for advice, people are generally going to willing to give it to you. But mm -hmm. if you don't do anything with it right. and you keep coming back to them, mm -hmm. they're less likely to continue that relationship. So yeah, that's it. Be a learner. We're seeing some themes, I think, in our... And are very early. I mean, we're less than ten episodes, but when uh, I'm in the first ten, you are. Did you know that uh, forty-seven percent of podcasts don't make it past the <laughs> third? Don't have uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Months. There's oh uh, yeah. Most don't make it past twenty. Um, so, you so yeah, we're on our way. But no, I, there's some themes. So uh, you said Monopoly earlier. The I think he's at least the third or fourth person. Mm -hmm. But no, I think uh, Tori uh, Haggerty that was in episode five, I believe. He mentioned a similar thread that you did about being open to listening, and he talked about a surgeon who asked an older, older surgeon mm -hmm. to watch his technique to see how he was doing, and he expected the surgeon to uh, give him very few pieces of advice. Instead, this this older surgeon opened up a can of whoop ass on him in a nice way yeah. and said, yeah, you need to do this. You need to do this. And, but the great part was, is he learned from that experience. And, mm -hmm. um, I think that's, it's a valuable lesson for all of us to take in is be open to criticism as long as I'm mean, being critical for critical sake, nobody wants that. But if you give constructive criticism, mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're open and listening to that, then that's, you know, that might be a way that some, some people probably don't appreciate criticism because they don't think it's constructive. So right. if you lead with that and say, hey, I'm just looking for some constructive criticism, something that I can really mm -hmm. take and change. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Sounds like uh, you would join a uh, adult scouting, scouting program. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Could be a cool thing. I mean, why stop? You mean have the Cub Scouts re reunite? No, like an adult focus version of a scouting program where you, oh. you regularly get together you you have the same kind of you know goals that you would achieve maybe some mm -hmm. badges you get mm -hmm. they could be you know oh kickstand badge unnaked and afraid yes <laughs> um, the irony is like i think i think when i 
when I was in college and I joined a fraternity and my mom asked me, Hey, what do you, what do you guys do? And I said, what fraternity? Mom, we, what fraternity? What fraternity? Yeah. I'm a Sigma Chi. Ah, okay. My, I would tell my mom, yeah, we, um, we do service projects. We have meetings once a week. We occasionally go on retreats and we, uh, we wear badges. Retreats. So my mom was like, <laughs> sounds like you're in college scouts. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yes, mom. Man, college scouts, man scouts. <laughs> okay. what, what badges are you talking about? Police badges no, that you stole? Oh, well, for, well <laughs> yeah, you got arrested. Exactly. You wear uh, badges. You get a badge and you're in a fraternity. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. SAE is what I was in. We didn't get. Oh, did you get we badges? We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> did you, you get badges or is he? It's, I mean, we did. We had like yeah, pins. Pins. Yeah, yeah, pins. Yeah, they yeah. call them bad. We call them badges. Oh, because uh, they one... sound more expensive that way. Yeah, you exactly. Pins you wear on your jacket. Badges you wear on your shirt. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you do you. There's uh you know, uh, the YMCA is doing a, uh, Leif Erickson, they're doing an adult, adult day camp in, huh. no in November. So uh, that could be an opportunity. That could. I, yeah. I think we should uh, we should do that as a company thing. Yeah. Co a corporate retreat. retreat. Corporate retreat. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Speaking of retreat, we got a retreat from this podcast. <laughs> we're, uh, we're about over our time on it. So we always like to throw out, like, what's what's a topic that we have not addressed yet? Something from your your childhood, your upbringing, any story you care to share that we did not get a chance to discuss? Man, that's a good question. Anything else come up? I mean, it, I, I mean, another scouting thought or memory yeah. comes up is okay. that we've already talked about scouting. We've yeah. really, really, really hammered in yeah. on scouting. That's here. all right. All right. Um, don't get your scouts hammered. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, do well, legal. you know, geez, I got some, there's more, I've got some stories about that, but maybe, <laughs> but maybe, maybe off podcast. That's in the uh, after show available on YouTube. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, when I, when I'm nostalgic about things and I don't, I, I mean, this may not be totally accurate, but I, I do think that, you know, there were, there weren't as many soft edges to things when, we, when I was younger mm -hmm. and the, this, there was a program in scouting that this week long program there was a youth like junior leader training right it was preparing young scouts to be able to take on like patrol leader and senior patrol leader those types of things and it was one of the most formative experiences i had and it was really a big piece of it was like we were it was a council wide thing so it was statewide i didn't know any of the other participants i didn't go with any of my troop we were split up into groups people you mm. didn't know little we got assigned patrols yeah but it was almost like we got transported into the 1950s because we mm. were it was a week we were all on our own we all had our own campsite they had kind of a neat piece of the program was the adult leaders would um you know we we're kind of set up like a, a big troop but the adult leaders would come they'd rotate through for meals we would cook in our campsites so we would always see different people for each of the meals but beyond that we were on our own and it was a little bit of Lord of the Flies. I yeah. mean, it was, it was might makes right. And, but I mean, there was a lot of that, again, just kind of figure it out type stuff we had to do. And I, I just, that program doesn't exist in the same way anymore. It's a little bit more conferenceified or whatever, sure. you know, but I don't know. I just, that, that, that memory is something that I don't know. I, I think of often, more often so than. So did you establish imagine. dominance then? I was, <laughs> you said might makes right. Yeah, no. Lord of the Flies. I did well, what happened was he actually. shamed them all. Yeah, yeah. shamed them all. Exactly. Exactly. Just look it up at a point. That's like the Catholic <laughs> rule book right there. <laughs> Shame them. <laughs> no, it was really, this, it was like, uh, it, it became majority rule is what we, there was a, there was an older, larger scout who was a bit of a bully yeah. and he got away with, he got away with bossing us around for a while. And then there was a turn in which we all stood up to him. So. It was just in there. It was another one of those you things. You can't talk anymore about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Boy Scout code. Yeah. yeah. Undisclosed, undisclosed location in the yeah, woods exactly. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so you said, I heard you say uh, no soft edges. Yeah. Was that the way you put that? Yeah, that's what I said. I don't know if that makes sense. but you, No, it, you know I, I think it does. Like That is something I think we we see in our society that's kind of changed is there there appears to be less of a tough lesson for us to figure things out. It's it's like we're handed things more oftentimes than not. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't maybe learn as much from those tough lessons yeah. without those hard edges. I mean, it's certainly a thing where it's eye of the beholder, right? Mm -hmm. I can imagine, you know, the uh, younger generations probably have similar viewpoint and 
looking at generations that are even younger than them, right? Is I, I, it's certainly, and, and I mean, you're probably, you grew up maybe one I'm or two 55. years. Okay. <laughs> Before me. Don't laugh. That's not same funny. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> right. I bet that there were, you know, I, if, if you, you like comparing yourself to me and Vince, it's probably there were even harder edges that you grew up with. I don't think so. I mean, I remember the, I mean, I consider myself a kid of the eighties, even though I was around in the seventies too, but yeah, I don't, it doesn't feel like that, that hard edge of life didn't really crop up until 2000s, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe 2010, mm -hmm. maybe more recent, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like comfort as much as the next person, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's, <laughs> but there's definitely times where like, I like what you said before about, you know, figure it out. Yeah. I think there's a lot of value in that because, mm. um, you see a lot of the younger generation these days hate to pick on you younger generation, but there are a lot where things must be, I mean, cell phones are given to seven year olds. Yeah, and right. I mean, I, 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 no, I have a 16 year old baby brother who literally anytime he needs something, he texts and says, Hey, how do I do this? And it's like, well, did you even try to figure it out? No. Well, if I wasn't here, who would you ask? Mom and dad. Well, and I'd be like, hey, if mom and dad are gone and I'm gone and Tony's gone, who, what, what are you going to do? I don't know. It's like, well, don't you have like the whole library of the world in your hand? Not the, you know, cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Cell phone, right. not the spirit. Right. <laughs> but with beer, you can figure out most so, things. Yeah. I mean, tea. it's tea. It's tea. <laughs> but no, I do. I, I, don't know, I hate to be the, the old man and, and, and talk about that kind of stuff. But I think that's. That's something that, like the Boy Scouts and and other groups that are around when I were younger too, that they kind of help teach you things. Um, you know, like some kids grew up without a mom or a dad, and you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts was probably there to help out with that. But uh, yeah, just, there are a lot of things that you kind of wish as you get older that were kind of the way that they could have been or should have been or were back then versus how they are now and. Um, it does feel like we live in a, a cushier society. And uh, I think of the movie Wally, you know, yeah, where right. we've got, I mean, you can, <laughs> uh, yeah, you got the seats and everybody's larger. And I'm certainly larger now than I used to be. But yeah. I mean, you know, you, that the, the quantity of things that we have access to, whether that's yeah. food or drink or entertainment, mm -hmm. it's more than it's ever been. But are we any better off as a society? You know, mm -hmm. probably not. Mm -hmm. um, I think society is probably at its best when it's foraging for itself and trading with others and um, learning and, and growing. But when things are adding to us, it just doesn't feel like we're growing as much. Yeah. So I like the... Uh, I, I wish you luck with the uh, Dakota Adventure because yeah, I think, you know, it's going to give us uh, a chance to have another opportunity to be outdoors mm -hmm. and to... Um, relive those experiences yeah well i forget hold on uh-oh in honor so getting back to the scouting thing patches are a big thing in scouting mm -hmm. yeah okay so something we've done as a startup is we put together we made some patches limited edition because scarcity is a thing in patches sure uh we're giving them to first customers and people who are kind of along on the journey and so i wanted to give each of you, one of these patches, it says camaraderie and adventure, which is kind of our slogan. Sweet. Um, but I just want to say thanks, you guys, well, for thank you. Having thank you. Me and, um, thank you. Yeah. And for what you guys are doing, it really fits right into to it. So this is this is not a badge. It's a patch. Yeah, it's a patch. Yeah, it's a patch. Do you want me to do you want to make a pin? OK, you know what? <laughs> Smart asses. <laughs> Don't put more than one Jeff in a room together. Yeah. The Jeff, hey. the Jeff financial expense. <laughs> for sass i think you rub <laughs> you rub syrup on the back of this and you apply yeah. it to your shirt that since you don't believe in syrup it won't work out <laughs> with that said thank you so much jeff hayward for being on our show yeah. and hanging with our jeff <laughs> yeah well, that was the worst part but i, I pretty no, often <laughs> thank you guys for having me i appreciate yeah, it, it yeah. Was fun. yeah if you want to find out more about Jeff and Dakota Adventure Supply, we'll have the link in our show notes. Otherwise, viewers, thank you so much again for your, your time, your attention, and always stay engaged. And we'll see you next time on Nostalgia Street. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. If you're on iTunes, please take a moment and leave us a rating and review. Head on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. You'll get access to engaging visuals that complement our podcast content. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us on our next episode. So until next time, listeners, stay curious, stay engaged. Never stop walking down Nostalgia Street.